Hello, and welcome to 805 Focus, where you get the latest updates on our local nonprofit community. My name is Greg Gorga, Executive Director of your Santa Barbara Maritime Museum, and your co-host today, filling in for the wonderful and amazing Cinder Sinclair. And with me today is Barbara Cronin Hirschberg, Board President of Friends of the Santa Barbara Library. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. So good to have you here today. So tell us a little bit about uh, the history of Friends of the Santa Barbara Library. Well, the library has been in existence for over 100 years, but the Friends started in 1952. Um, and then, of course, there's been changes over the years. But they're there mainly to support the library. That could be with funds or with advocacy or just developing community awareness. Oh, wonderful. So what are the th some of the things you've done in the past that you're proud of? Um, well, we try to get creative. So I think one of the things we're most proud of is we did a fundraiser that was based on Sue Grafton's novels, who was a local author. So it was called A Day with Kinsey. Mm -hmm. And we didn't write it, a former librarian did write it, but we hired trolleys and we went all over town to the locations that they talked about in her, her books. And she has a lot of fans. And oh then they came back and interviewed friends of Sue Grafton, and we had really nice refreshments. And that was one of our biggest fundraisers. Oh, wonderful. And very exciting. That sounds like fun, because she, so she named the city that she wrote about, what, Santa Teresa, I yes. think? But it yes. was Santa Barbara. Exactly. So, so she referenced Santa Barbara yes. quite a bit. Oh, wonderful. Which is fun if you live here to figure out, oh, oh, Hope Ranch, oh, the Coomber Country Club, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's an amazing author, but just that part of it makes it even more fun to read her. Well, wonderful. And what are you working on now? Um, we are working on um, one of our fundraisers this year. Um, it's going to be a trivia night, a literary trivia night. Trivia nights are very popular now, I notice, in pubs and whatever. But ours is strictly to do with books and authors and titles. So. Um, and we invited the library staff to come just as our guests. Mm -hmm. So um, that'll be fun because we work side by side and we're there to support the library, but we don't often get to spend a lot of time with the library staff. Itself. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so growing up, I went to the library quite a bit. Uh, you know, we didn't have internet. We said, you know, we were reading real books all the time. And I think a lot of people in the community don't realize that the, the, their taxes don't really support the public library to the extent that it needs support. So you are really providing all sorts of extra services that are very key and, and needed to the Santa Barbara library system. Yes, so we count on giving them $65,000 a year, which has increased over time, and we want to keep increasing it. And our money primarily goes for books and programs. Uh, the Santa Barbara Education, not Education Foundation, Library Foundation, they tend to do more the big capital projects and they do Santa Barbara Read. So as I'm sure people walk by and see the library is under construction now because it's an old building, but the city primarily is paying for that with Measure C. Okay. Um, so they, the, they did the children's area, right? Didn't they just redo that? And now they're doing the outside area. Yeah, so the, um, the Santa Barbara Library Foundation did a lot of fundraising for the children's library, which is gorgeous, mm -hmm. whether you're a kid or not. I love going down there because it's a hub of activity. Um, and then the city, like I said, it's, it's paying for like the elevator projects so that it's ADA accessible mm -hmm. so that moms and their strollers can get in for story time. Um, the downstairs area, which is kind of like a dungeon, so the staff will have a nicer place to work. And then eventually they want to have a teen center upstairs oh. um, and a place to look out over the plaza. Right now, it needs to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know the plaza is being named for Michael Tobes, who is yes. a very good friend of all of our nonprofits, here, yes. a leader in our community, but a really good friend of the nonprofits. So you mentioned story time. Is that something Friends of the Santa Barbara Library helps support? We would help support those programs, and it's also amazing how many grants the library staff writes um, because they don't have the funding. Every year mm -hmm. their budget gets cut, unfortunately, and that's 
supposed to be coming up again this year, yeah. though we're, we're hopeful. So, um, yes, yeah, so we help buy books and help support those programs. There's also the library van on the go, which came primarily from funding from the Women's Fund that we all love too. But it's fantastic in that the library is accessible to a lot more people. We only have the Central Library, the East Side, Montecito Library, but there really isn't anything on the West Side. So they go to Harding School, they go to the parks, they have Wi-Fi. So I think the main thing we've been talking about is just how much the community depends on the library. We always say when we were growing up, it was like you could go there by yourself and you could do your homework and check out books. But now when I go in, people are getting help with their resumes, how mm -hmm. to do job interviews, how to find their paperwork so that they can apply for things. And we have a lot of bilingual staff. Because mm -hmm. so, you have computer access at the yes. libraries. And then a lot of low-income families might not have Wi-Fi, so the, the bookmobile goes out to their yes. community uh, each week. They're there uh, once a week. Yeah, different locations, and they advertise that so people know where to go. And mm -hmm. daycare providers can bring the children out and get a, a sense of community, yeah. definitely. And then there's also, um, at the library, there's hot spots so people can check out hotspot so they can get Wi-Fi access if they don't have it at home. They also have a, you know, a checkout things library now. So if you want to check out a ukulele or... Oh, wow. Also <laughs> I thought it was a big deal when I could check out a, a CD <laughs> or a, a movie from the library, but they they have everything now. Oh, wonderful. They so do. what is story time? Somebody reads stories to young children? So yeah, there's different, um, different levels and the librarians do all the programs. So there would be something for toddler or something for a little bit older children. There's lots of programs for teens. There's a teen advisory board. And one of the things I'm most excited about that the library offers training for, it's called Orton Gillingham Reading Program. Mm -hmm. And it's geared to children with reading disabilities, dyslexia, or maybe they're just behind. Mm -hmm. So you go through a three-day training, or I did it during COVID and did it all online. And probably my favorite thing as a retired teacher is to go every week and I work with two different students and that luxury of working one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and really tuning into what's happening here, what's not working. When yeah. I had a classroom of 25 to 30 children, that was, you couldn't quite do More that. More difficult, yeah, yeah. And you, some of those reading issues are undiagnosed in, exactly. in a lot of these youth, right? I mean. Yes, or it could take a while. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll say, well, you know, let's watch and follow because it might just be maturity. And yeah, so yeah. usually by third grade though, you know, they know. So you're a retired issue. teacher. How did you get involved with the Friends of the Santa Barbara uh, Library? My very good friend, and I'm going to say her name, Linda Love, because she's been involved with the Library of the Friends for years. She knows all the history. She's like our go-to person. And she, fortunately, she remembers everything. So she was on the board and some other friends that are retired teachers. So most of us are retired educators, but there's also business people and mm -hmm. And on that note, we, the East Side used to have a, f a small friends group, and then they just kind of, you know, over time, they just said, we're ready to move on. So we're really hoping to pull more people in from that community, the Spanish-speaking community, so we can represent their needs, you know, in a better way. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping that happens oh, wonderful. soon. And do you do a program, Books to Keep? books to keep. Yeah. Do you do something like that? Well, we what, do. So when you buy books, well, who are you buying the books for? Oh, for the, that's a really good question. For the library, but a lot of them are books to give away mm -hmm. because now we're gearing up for the summer reading program. And um, this is the first year the friends are out scouting around for prizes and donations and passes. Mm -hmm. But when the children or teenagers sign up, they get a journal to track their goals, their reading, but they also can choose a free book. So, and I was at an event yesterday for Reading Ambassadors, where they, you know, help teach kids to teach other kids to read. And the kids were choosing books, and one little girl was like, 
well, do I have to bring this back? You know, because we were happened to be meeting in the school library, and we're like, no, it's yours. And she's like, yay! You know, so I love that. You know, absolutely the, the joy of reading books. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum is offering a family pass to the museum for well, folks they to do are. that summer reading program. So, <laughs> so that's wonderful. And you know, people I, have been so generous. You uh, and a lot you, of there's a yes. lot of good nonprofits oh, in town helping my, each other yes, out. Yes, yes. And keeping uh, giving a child a book, especially for a low income family, is so important because I know, you know, the average low income family doesn't have a single book at home. Uh, so, so the, for the, the child to take a book home and, and share it with their siblings as well uh, is very special, right? That, that is so true. And we also started, we don't have a friend's bookstore. Most friend's groups, that's how they make their money. They have a, a friend's of a library bookstore with mm -hmm. affordable books. Um, we don't, but we started a book cart up in front of the Voice Gallery in the Coomera Plaza with Mark and Carrie, they're very involved in the community. Mark, from the, uh, the, the voice, the yes, Santa Barbara voice. Yes, yes, so they're very sweet. They said, yes, they we're are. moving into this new space. And so we put two carts out in front of their, their gallery, which is also gorgeous. My mm -hmm. other love is art. And um, they collect the money, people just stop in and pay the money. And then um, one of our board members picks it up once a week. But any leftover children's books that aren't really selling, then another board member brings them over to um, El Camino School because that's a low socioeconomic school. Mm -hmm. And the, even the teachers don't have huge libraries in their classrooms. So almost every week we bring books over there. Oh, wonderful. Everybody so, needs books. So Mark and Carrie are selling the books and the proceeds go to support the Friends of the Santa Barbara. Yeah, Library. so people just, you know, look through they bring the books and money inside. We have a box there. It's very yeah. sophisticated. They, <laughs> <laughs> they're either one or two dollars. Mm -hmm. They collect the money and then and we pick it up. But and the summer reading program is encouraging children to read books during their school break. Uh, is there a certain amount of number of books they are encouraged to read? Um, it's it's interesting because the library has done the librarians done a lot of research that it's more beneficial if children set their own goals. Mm -hmm. If they say, well, I think I can read, you know, five books in a week, or I could read 20 minutes a day. So they kind of make a little contract with the librarian and they have a journal and they um, collect beads on a bracelet every time they, you know, check with the librarian. Oh and then God. at the end of that, then they'll be able to choose some of these cool prizes oh, that wonderful. local businesses and nonprofits are giving us. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it sounds like it would be better for the children. And they pick out their own books exactly. as well as the number of books they're Exactly. Read. So um, it's kind of giving, empowering them. Mm -hmm. It's not like saying, oh, well, this isn't at your reading level sure. or you have to do this much. So it's, it's interesting. And, and they like it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've well, been in there and it's like, they're choosing a bead, like it's a uh -huh. very valuable item, so. Oh, wonderful. Well, and it's also so important because when children aren't in school, they lose a lot of what they learned, and, yet, and they're almost, you know, a third of what they learned, I think, from studies, I, I'm not quite sure, but I know it, they, they regress quite a bit exactly. during the summer months, so reading probably helps mitigate that regression. Exactly, a lot of research on that. Something as simple, I think, as even reading five books over the summer, sort of keeps you in there. And when I was a teacher, we always encouraged that, you know, they would come from the library and say, you know, this is a theme and you can earn these things. And truly the kids that were able to do it over the summer, it really did help with their, oh, with their reading level. So are there any other programs that Friends of the Santa Barbara Library supports that uh, we didn't talk about yet? Um, it's more, I think, would say indirectly support, like I said, programs and book purchases. But also, like if there's any events that they need help with, or as we do our own events to raise money and raise awareness. We've had some big book sales out in front of the library. Um, and also, I'm, I'm really trying to encourage more people to become a tutor for children. Mm -hmm. You can also tutor for adults, and they have a program to teach 
people to do that as well. Adult because, literacy. Yes. Absolutely. So do you utilize all volunteers? Or, uh, it's mostly volunteers? Yes, it is, it is an all-volunteer organization. We always say we're like the worker bees. And the only people we pay for are CPA and accountant mm -hmm. and our webmaster, our web designer, who's mm -hmm. incredible. And everybody, I have to say, gives us a pretty nice break. You know, they appreciate the library and they appreciate nonprofit. But we're also proud that we're not paying anyone. And mm -hmm. some of us put in a lot. Oh, I bet, I bet. <laughs> a lot of time. You know, like right now I'm working on the newsletter and the Spring Appeal and you know, mm -hmm. finishing up a fundraiser, getting ready for uh, summer reading, yeah. So what are some of the ways f folks can, out there can volunteer with you? Well, one easy thing is just to become a member, like get on our website and become a friend of a library. And you can do that for as little as $35. If you want to get more involved, like come to a board meeting, they're always open. We mm -hmm. meet on the third Wednesday, um, of the month. We have been meeting at the Faulkner and I want to start going back and forth to the east side and then mm -hmm. just see if it's a good fit for them. Other friends we know just donate books because they want to help the library and mm -hmm. you know oh, indirectly. Wow. So they can clean out their their collection and, and donate those books yeah. to you. And then are you, do you use volunteers to do like the reading programs and the one-on-one -on -one tutoring with students? So that would be a, a library program. A library. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Yeah, and there's a, without getting into all the details, but I think because the library is, they do have union workers, mm -hmm. there's like limitations okay. as to all what right. people can do as a volunteer. But certainly fundraising is a big issue, oh, so yeah. be, uh, an annual <laughs> membership, and, and how else can people support you? Oh, and come to the events and go buy some books at the book cart, and just let your city council members know that it's, it's not a luxury, it's like an essential piece of our community. And I truly mean that. And if you, you know, I always encourage the city council members, they're, they're busy, I know, but like, go in the library and just hang out for a little bit. And in 20 minutes, you'll see the amazing things that are going on. They even have now, um, like little file drawers where people can drop off things like food or clothes or stationery, and then people can quietly go in and open up the drawers and see is there anything there that I hmm. need. So there, I just, I love, I love our library. I think it's one of probably one of the most incredible libraries in the country. Mm -hmm. We always say they're a state of the art, they're just, you know, going above and beyond. And a big push is that our, our director, Jessica Cariente, she wants highly trained librarians. Mm -hmm. It's not running anymore on hourly employees for many reasons. They, there's a turnover, then you're training people, and then they leave, and you need people in a supervisory role to have the library open, which is part of the reason it's not open seven days a week. It's not because uh, it's under construction. There needs to be more funding mm -hmm. to pay for library staff. And the big chunk of that funding comes from the city of Santa Barbara. Yes. So that's the advocacy you talked about yes. is advocating to our city council yes. and um, uh, members to, to continue and ideally increase the support. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's about 78%. And then the county, we get a per capita amount. I think that's about 13%. So, you know, in the future, it's possible. There could be some tax, tax measure that the money specifically, that's my dream, mm -hmm. could go to support the library so that every year it isn't like, oh my God, what are we going to cut? Where is the money going to come from? And they were able to do that in the city of Goleta when they, you know, became a city. So there's money set aside for the library that they don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing how the library continues to grow and continues to adapt and, and uh, expand to, to meet the needs of our community. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the whole digital part too, because, you know, we are in the digital age. So the fact that you can get the New York Times, you know, you. There's programs you can just download on your phone. I have a friend that's a big supporter of the library, and I don't think she ever physically walks in there, but she uses 
all the resources. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Barbara, and thank you for everything you do and for all the work that the Friends of the Santa Barbara Library do. And thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you next time on 805 Focus.